Chapter 10 of Among the Night People by Clara Dillingham Pearson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Jude Summers. Chapter 10 The Greedy Red Fox. The Red Fox had been well brought up. His mother was a most cautious person and devoted to her children. When he did things which were wrong, he could never excuse himself by saying that he did not know better. Of course, it is possible that he was like his father in being so reckless, yet none of his two brothers and three sisters were like him. They did not remember their father. In fact, they had never seen him, and their mother seldom spoke of him. His mother had taken all the care of her six children, even pulling fur from her own belly to make a soft nest covering for them when they were first born. They were such helpless babies. Their eyes and ears were closed for some time, and all they could do was to tumble each other around and drink the warm milk that their mother had for them. They had three burrows to live in, all of them in an open field between the forest and the farmhouse. Sometimes they lived in the first, sometimes in the second, and sometimes in the third. One night, when their mother went out to hunt, she smelled along the ground near the burrow and then came back. "'There has been a man near here,' she said, "'and I shall take you away.' That excited the little foxes very much, and each wanted to be the first to go, but she hushed them up, and said that if they talked so loudly as that, some man might catch them before they moved, and then—' She said nothing more, yet they knew from the way she moved her tail that it would be dreadful to have a man catch them. While she was carrying them to another burrow one at a time, those who were left behind talked about men. "'I wish I knew why men were so dreadful,' said the first. "'It must be because they have very big mouths and sharp teeth.' "'I wonder what color their fur is,' said another. Now these young foxes had seen nobody but their mother. If she had not told them that different animals wore different colored furs, they would have thought that everybody looked just like her, with long reddish-yellow fur, and that on the hinder part of the back quite grizzled, throat, belly, and the tip of the tail white, and the outside of the ears black. They were very sure, however, that no other animal had such a wonderful tail as she, with each of its long reddish hairs tipped with black, and the beautiful brush of pure white at the end. In fact, she had told them so. The next time their mother came back, the four children who were still there cried out, "'Please, tell us, what color is a man's fur?' She was a sensible and prudent fox, and knew it was much more important to keep her children from being caught than it was to answer all their questions at once. Besides, she already had one child in her mouth when they finished their question, and she would not put him down for the sake of talking. And that also was right, you know, for one can talk at any time, but the time to do work is just when it needs to be done. After they were snugly settled in the other burrow, she lay down to feed them, and while they were drinking their milk, she told them about men. Men, she said, are the most dreadful animals there are. Other animals will not trouble you unless they are hungry, but a man will chase you even when his stomach is full. They have four legs, of course, all animals have but they use only two to walk on. Their front legs they use for carrying things. We carry with our mouths, yet the only thing I ever saw a man have in his mouth was a short brown stick that was a fire at one end. I thought it very silly, for he couldn't help breathing some of the smoke, and he let the stick burn up and then threw the fire away. However, men are exceedingly silly animals." One of the little red foxes stopped drinking long enough to say, You didn't tell us what color their fur is. The only fur they have, said Mother Fox, is on their heads. They usually have fur on the top and back parts of their heads, and some of them have a little on the lower part of their faces. They may have black, red, brown, gray, or white fur. It is never spotted. The children would have liked to have asked more questions, but Mother Fox had eaten nothing since the night before, and was in a hurry to begin her hunt. One could never tell all that happened to the little red foxes. 
they moved from burrow to burrow many times. They learned to eat meat, which their mother brought them, instead of drinking milk from her body. They frolicked together near the doorway of their home, and while they did this their mother watched from the edge of the forest, ready to warn them if she saw men or dogs coming. She had chosen to dig her burrows in the middle of a field, because then there was no chance for men or dogs to sneak up to them unseen, as there would have been in the forest. Yet she feared that her children would be playing so hard that they might forget to watch. They slept most of the day, and at night they were always awake. When they were old enough, they began to hunt for themselves. Mother Fox gave them a great deal of good advice, and then paid no more attention to them. After that, she took her naps on a sunny hillside, lying in a beautiful soft reddish-yellow bunch, with her bushy tail curled around to keep her feet warm, and shade her eyes from the light. The six brothers and sisters seldom saw each other after this. Foxes succeed better in life if they live alone, and of course they want to succeed. The eldest brother was the reckless one. His mother had done her best by him, and still he was reckless. He knew by heart all the rules that she had taught him, but he did not keep them. These were the rules. Always run on hard, dry things when you can. Soft, wet places take more scent from your feet, and dogs can follow your trail better on them. Never go into any place unless you are sure you can get out. Keep your tail dry. A fox with a wet tail cannot run well. If dogs are chasing you, jump onto a rail fence and run along the top of it, or walk in a brook. Always be willing to work for your food. That which you find all ready and waiting for you may be the bait of a trap. Always walk when you are hunting. The fox who trots will pass by that which he should find. For a while he said them over to himself every night when he started out. Then he began to skip a night once in a while. Next he got to saying them only when he had been frightened the day before. After that he stopped saying them altogether. I am a full-grown fox now, he said to himself, and such things are only good for children. I guess I know how to take care of myself. He often went toward the farmhouse to hunt, sometimes for grapes, sometimes for vegetables, and sometimes for heartier food. Collie had chased him away, but Collie was growing old and fat and had to hang his tongue out when he ran, so the red fox thought it only fun. He trotted along in the moonlight, his light slender body seeming to float over the ground, and his beautiful tail held straight out behind. His short, slender legs were strong and did not tire easily, and as long as he could keep his tail dry, he outran Collie easily. Sometimes he would get far ahead and sit down to wait for him. Then he would call out saucy things to the panting dog, and only start on when Collie's nose had almost touched him. Fine evening, he once said. Hope your nose works better than your legs do. That was a mean thing to say, you know but Collie always keeps his temper and only answered, It's sweating fine, thank you. He answered that way because it is the sweat on a dog's nose which makes it possible for him to smell and follow scents which dry-nosed people do not even know about. Then the fox gave a long, light leap and was off again, and Collie had to lie down to breathe. I think, said he, that I can tend sheep better than I can chase foxes, and it is a good deal easier. Still, Collie didn't like to be beaten, and he lay awake the rest of the night thinking how he would enjoy catching that fox. Every little while he heard the red fox barking off in the fields, and it made him twitch his tail with impatience. Now, the red fox was walking carefully toward the farmhouse and planning to catch a turkey. He had watched the flocks of turkeys all afternoon from his sleeping place on the hillside. Every time he opened his eyes between naps, he had looked at them as they walked to and fro in the fields, talking to each other in their gentle, complaining voices, and moving their heads back and forth at every step. If his stomach had not been so full, 
he would have tried to catch one then. He made up his mind to try it that night, and decided that he would rather have the plump, light-colored one than any of her darker sisters. He did not even think of catching the old gobbler, for he was so big and strong and fierce-looking. He had just begun to walk with the turkey mothers and children. During the summer they had had nothing to do with each other. When the red fox reached the farmyard, he found them roosting on the low branches of an apple tree. A long board had been placed against it to let the chickens walk up. Now the chickens were in the hen house, but the board was still there. The red fox looked all around. It was a starlit night. The farmhouse was dark and quiet. Collie was nowhere to be seen. Once he heard a horse stamp in his sleep. Then all was still again. The red fox walked softly up the slanting board. The gobbler stirred. The red fox stopped with one foot in the air. When he thought him fast asleep, he went on. The gobbler stirred again, and so did the others. The red fox sprang for the plump, light-colored one. She jumped also, and with the others flew far up to the top of the barn. The red fox ran down the board with five buff tail feathers in his mouth. He was much out of patience with himself. If I hadn't stopped to pick for her, he said, I could have caught one of the others easily enough. He sneaked around in the shadows to see if the noise made by the turkeys had awakened the farmer or Collie. The farmhouse was still dark. Collie was not at home. I will look in the hen house, said the red fox. He walked slowly and carefully to the hen house. The big door was closed and bolted. He walked all around and into the poultry yard. There was a small opening through which the fowls could pass in and out. The red fox managed to crawl through, but it was not easy. It squeezed his body and crushed his fur. He had to push very hard with his hind feet to get through at all. When he was inside, it took him some time to get his breath. That's the tightest place I was ever in, said he softly but I always could crawl through a very small hole. He found the fowls all roosting too high for him. Perhaps if the hen house had been larger, he might have leapt and caught one, but there was not room for one of his finest springs. He went to the nests and found many eggs there. These he broke and ate. They ran down in yellow streams from the corners of his mouth and made his long fur very sticky. You can just imagine how hard it would be to eat raw eggs from the shell with only your paws to hold them. One egg was light and slippery. He bit hard to break that one, and when it broke, it was hollow. Not a drop of anything to eat in it, and then it cut his lip a little too, so that he could not eat any more without it hurting. He jumped and said something when he was cut. The Shanghai cock, who was awakened by the noise, said that he exclaimed, "'Brambles and traps!' but it may not have been anything so bad as that. We will hope it was not. The Shanghai cock awakened all the other fowls. Don't fly off your perch, he cried. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. The other cocks kept saying, Arr! as they do when hawks get near. The hens squawked and squawked and squawked until they were out of breath. When they got their breath, they squawked some more. The red fox knew that it was time for him to go. The farmer would be sure to hear the noise. He put his head out of the hole through which he had come in, and he pushed as hard as he could with his hind feet and scrambled with his forefeet. His fur was crushed worse than ever, and he was squeezed so tightly that he could hardly breathe. You see, it had been all he could do to get in through the hole, and now he had nine eggs in his stomach, excepting what had run down at the corners of his mouth, and he was too large to pass through. The fowls saw what was the matter and wanted to laugh. They thought it very funny, and yet the sooner he could get away, the better they would like it. The red fox had his head outside and saw a light flash in the farmer's room. Then he heard doors open, and the farmer came toward the hen house with a lantern in his hand. Collie came trotting around the corner of the house. The red fox made one last desperate struggle and then lay still. When the farmer picked him up and tied a rope around his neck, he had to pull him backward into the hen house to do it. The red fox was very quiet and gentle, as people of his family always are when caught. Collie pranced around on two legs and barked as loudly as he could. 
the fowls blinked their round yellow eyes in the lantern light, and the farmer's man ran out for an empty chicken coop into which to put the red fox. Collie was usually quite polite, but he had not forgotten how rude the red fox had been to him, and it was a fine chance to get even. "'Good evening,' he barked. "'Oh, good evening. I'm glad you came. Don't think you must be going. Excuse me, but your mouth worked better than your legs, didn't it?' The red fox shut his eyes and pretended not to hear. The dirt from the floor of the henhouse had stuck to his egg-covered fur, and he looked very badly. They put him in a chicken coop with a board floor so that he couldn't burrow out, and he curled down in a little heap and hid his face with his tail. Collie hung around for a while and then went off to sleep. After he was gone, the red fox cleaned his fur. "'I got caught this time,' he said." but it won't happen again. Now I must watch for a chance to get away. It will surely come. It did come, but that is another story. End of chapter 10